I'm Mike, and today, genetics and disease. You've heard it before, or maybe even said it yourself. It runs in my family. Diabetes runs in my family. Heart disease runs in my family. Or maybe obesity runs in my family, and so on. So we are going to look and see if most people's family disease really is genetic, or if it's something that they have control over. The general understanding that I've come across is that if you have a genetic disease in your family, you are probably gonna get it, or if you already have that disease, there was nothing you can do and nothing that you could have done. And for some people, playing the genetic victim is a bit easier. You can just take the weight off your shoulders and escape any type of lifestyle regret you might have. So let's take a look at some of our most common diseases that are often blamed on genetics and see if that blame is justified. Let's start with the most common one. Obesity. This is a hard one because if you are very overweight or obese, there's a really high chance that your parents are as well. So are they the smoking gun, the proof that your BMI is genetic? No. If only there was some sort of largely overweight population like us today to compare to a normal weight population with the exact same genetics, then maybe we could get some answers. Is there... Yes, we can compare ourselves to ourselves in the past. You've probably seen this common map of America becoming heavier over the years. I assure you, this is not genes changing overnight. It takes thousands of years to get this type of DNA change. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that genes have zero role. In fact, this study on twins shows that within a population that eats a standard American diet, genes do play a role. Even separated twins have a related BMI. But it gets more interesting. This study of 17,000 people found that if you have a certain obesity gene called FTO, you are more likely to weigh more if you are sedentary compared to other sedentary people, but if you are active, you will weigh the same as comparably active people. So the gene becomes neutralized by exercise. But is exercise the only way? This is a vegan channel, you know I have to bring it up at some point. Here's the Adventist 2 study showing that vegans were the only population that averaged in the normal BMI range, despite being comparably active. No, your genes do not change when you go vegan. It's less about your DNA in this case, and more about what you put in your body for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Especially when you consider that people with these obesity genes only weigh two to seven pounds more, depending on the gene, it becomes clear that it is not your genes that determines the size of your pants. Apologize for the lameness, but this is why obesity researchers have gone as far as to say, quote, a focus on individual genetic traits is a mere distraction. Another very interesting example of genes and disease is Alzheimer's and the APOE4 or Alzheimer's gene. As this study mentions, people tend to have a fatalistic view toward developing Alzheimer's disease. In the US, a APOE4 gene from one parent means a 15% increased chance of getting Alzheimer's, but a gene from both parents means nine times the risk. So it's settled, Alzheimer's is genetic, not so fast. There is a population on Earth that has a very high incidence of the Alzheimer's gene. So is their Alzheimer's rate through the roof? No, that population is Nigeria, and as this study mentions, they have very low Alzheimer's rates. And as this other study shows, the Alzheimer's gene does not increase the risk of getting Alzheimer's at all. But when you look at people with Nigerian genes that live in the US, that Alzheimer's gene does increase risk. So scientists believe that this Nigerian Alzheimer's phenomenon, quote, is probably due to a diet that is low in animal fat, very counter to our diet in the US. So why does this happen? Well, it turns out that APOE is the principal carrier of cholesterol through the brain. So if your cholesterol is low enough, you can dodge this effect altogether. So it's no surprise that when looking at Western populations, high cholesterol is more highly correlated with Alzheimer's than the Alzheimer's gene itself. And so yeah, people tend to have a fatalistic view toward developing Alzheimer's disease. However, the data undermines that view. In this case, it is the diet that is fatal, not the genes that are fatalistic. Okay, now to another widespread Western disease that is commonly believed to be genetic, diabetes. And here is Neil Bernard on the topic. Diabetes is genetic, right? It runs in families. And there, in fact, are genes for diabetes. Genes are in two categories. Certain genes are dictators. I'm talking about the genes that say blue eyes or brown hair. They are dictators. They give orders. You can't argue. But the genes for diabetes are committees. They're making suggestions. Their activity depends on what we put into our bodies. 
So again, this is a situation where diet can beat genetics. The fact that vegan populations have been measured having 78% less incidence of all diabetes than their neighbors makes this pretty undeniable. And then when you add how a vegan diet can reverse diabetes, as Neil Bernard's studies show, and it's not looking like genes are as deterministic as we're told. And in an extreme case of how well this can be reversed, the leading cause of blindness in the US is diabetic retinopathy. I know somebody that believes that this type of blindness has to occur in their family because it's a family disease, but that becomes harder to believe when you look at Kempner's rice diet. In the 50s, Kempner put people on a primarily fruit and rice diet that was cholesterol free and very high carb, over 90% carbohydrates, so much that he actually believed that it would make their diabetes worse. But not only did their fasting blood sugar drop by 25% and their cholesterol drop by 60 points, but some of the patients went from unable to read headlines to normal vision. It didn't cure everybody, but to take a disease that was believed to be genetic and irreversible and reverse it with diet alone is pretty remarkable. All right, now to our last disease for the day, our leading killer, heart disease. I've heard many people say that their heart disease is genetic, and apart from people who have structural genetic abnormalities, that's different. This seems to be a largely unnecessarily deterministic attitude. But it's not surprising when you have doctors telling you to draw out your family tree and trace back the heart disease as if that's the best we can do. I'm sorry, but heart disease is pretty normal and ubiquitous in the US. The most common cause of death in Western populations, but not in all populations. Like the Alzheimer's rates in Nigeria, the heart attack rates in Uganda were mind-bogglingly low. As this study shows, they took 632 people and age-matched Ugandans with people in St. Louis and looked at the autopsies and found that in the St. Louis population, there were 136 cases of heart attack, which is over 20% in the Ugandan population one person. They decided to crank it up to over 1,400 Ugandan autopsies, and they still only found one heart attack, and here's the kicker. It didn't even kill them, it was actually healed. How? They ate a starch-based, virtually entirely plant-based diet, with foods like green plantain, sweet potatoes, banana leaves, cassava, yams, maize, and millet. And when you add that African-American populations sadly have higher levels of heart disease in middle-aged men, up to 70% higher, it becomes clear that DNA is not the whole picture and diet plays a huge part. And no, I cannot finish this video without mentioning for the thousandth time Dr. Esselstyn's study where he reverses heart disease, showing a massive clearing of heart arteries within a few weeks and a 100 times lower incidence of heart disease and stroke for those who followed the diet versus those who did not over a 12 year period. In conclusion, if you follow a diet where sickness is normal, then genes do matter. But you can bypass genes and bypass, bypass surgery by changing your lifestyle in the form of a diet and exercise. And I think that is the positive spin here. While it is a bit easier to say you have no control and your genes are what gave you your disease, there is some hope here that you can actually take control of your destiny in many cases for many diseases. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to let me know down below in the comments if you have had any experience overcoming your family disease with diet. I know there's some amazing stories from you guys. Okay, feel free to like and subscribe and see you next time. And in fact, most disease genes, whether it's for heart disease or diabetes or hypertension, certain forms of cancer, even Alzheimer's disease, they're not dictators, they're committees.